come out of it. And I believe most of you will agree with me that until maybe you came to Lens or to Europe or to the diaspora, there are certain things in your culture that you took for granted. But then when you moved out of that cultural context and you came into a culture, another context, then you begin to miss these things that you once upon a time took it for granted. And so the point I want to make here is that unless you move out of your culture, sometimes you underestimate your culture and the importance of it. But having lived here for a while or having been here for some time, now you see how important your culture is because you are living in a different country, in a different notion of today. So, but since culture is that important, then the next challenge is how do we, those of us who are living in the diaspora, and now we are giving birth to children, yeah? And our children are being born here, not in Africa, not in Ghana. How do we pass this on to them? And I want to believe that each and every one of us, the first point of education, the first point of enlightenment that every child gets is from their parents. Is from their parents. So if our children will know anything about our culture, if our children will know how important our culture is, it begins with us, the parents. And the parents in this age is not only the mother, but the mother and the father. And it begins from the very stage, early stage. Yeah. For example, I gave birth to my daughter here in Austria, in Vienna. And on the seventh day of the week that my daughter was born, we did a traditional naming ceremony for my daughter. And I invited people from the Ghanaian community. I invited also my colleagues from the Austrian community. For them, it was a, an eye opener. Yeah? For the young people, they have not seen it before. Yeah? And they were very, very happy about experiencing such a thing. But that is where it begins from. It begins from the day that you were born, or officially, it begins from the day that you are given a name. The name that you are given, it is not that you don't have a name. Your parents know the name they are going to give to every child, yeah? sometimes even before the child is born. Or if not, at the day the child is born, they know the name they are given. But why do they gather people? Why do they bring family together? Why do they bring um, friends together and say that this child is going to be called this name? From this day forward. Why? Because the child has been born into a society. And society informs the way we behave. Society informs the way we train our children. And it is very, very important that even though we are in the diaspora, we don't have to lose these things. It's very important for us. And it's also very important for the children. So the first point of coming into contact or learning the importance of our culture is through parents. So we as parents or we as adults have a responsibility of giving the culture and all the learnings of this culture back to the young generation, to our children. How do we do that? How do we do that? Is the question. And then I go back to the village, and I bring you back to your own village. In those days, in those days, when there were no television, before television, grandmother or grandfather played a very important role. Yes, today we are in the technology age. There are television, all that internet makes things, yeah, but we must also not lose the importance of the traditional you told your child an Anansi story when was the last time that you even bought an Anansi story a book yeah, with Anansi stories and then gave it to your child or read it to your child 
as bedtime story. Hello? Last about three years uh -huh. uh, was the time that I spoke about a civil mm -hmm. to my children. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I got to know that the children mm -hmm. have developed interests. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, when they are eating or something comes across, mm -hmm. what they do, they tease themselves that you are, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for, mm -hmm. that is the lady. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah. in fact, they used to joke yeah. among themselves. Yeah. But as far as I know, mm -hmm. it could be about three, four years back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for sharing that. But the point I'm trying to it's very, very important. Look, tell me any Anansi story that you know that does not have a pedagogical yeah, element to it. When I say pedagogy, I'm talking about teaching. I'm talking about knowledge, giving knowledge. Every Anansi story has in education, it has an epistemology, it has a whole knowledge be behind it, it has a philosophy, and it has always pedagogical values. It has teachings to teach children. Teaching to teach children. But what we are doing is that we have had the benefits, or some of us have had the benefit of all, of all these things. And I'm telling you, the way you live your life today yeah, is partly because of the stories that you have heard as a child growing up. Now, our children are born here. They don't have access or we don't give them access to these stories that we have read as a children, as children, or that we have heard from our parents as children. And they are growing up and they are reading all sorts of things. They are hearing all sorts of other stories. And then, when they have come of age, it becomes a struggle between us and them. It becomes a struggle between us and them. But if we are able to start reading or teaching our children these stories, you know what we are doing is that we are adding value to whatever they get in the school. In the normal school system, they, they are taught something, but we also add value to it. Because in our stories, it teaches us how to analyze society. Yeah? It teaches us everything from mathematics to philosophy. Everything is in there in those stories that we hear. It teaches us about community. It teaches us about how to relate.